Hi, Tim T. Wills here, and welcome to the very first video in our KLR maintenance series. In this video, we're going to be changing the fork oil in our front forks. Stick around, we'll get started right after this. Okay, so this video series, uh, which will always be titled KLR 650 Maintenance in the Header to make it easy for you to find. This series is a result of a, uh, a couple of subscriber requests that I had received uh, asking to see uh, more common uh, maintenance items and uh, more basic items uh, that you do to the bike. Uh, I'm always making videos how to adding new products, doing modifications. So I thought this was a really good idea. So thank you guys out there for your suggestions. Uh, keep them coming. Uh, if I can do it, I will. Uh, and this is an example of that. So this very first video, we're gonna focus on changing the fork oil and show you how that's done. Uh, I actually did this work at the time uh, I was upgrading the front fork springs. I just did not include the fork oil change as part of the video because it was gonna make uh, the video too long. Uh, so I appreciate the feedback and we're going to be covering some of those basics like the fork oil change, how to remove the tank, the seat, the fairings, uh, how to uh, change the oil. Uh, for some of you guys this may be super basic stuff and this is why I'm giving it a different series title. Uh, so if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. But for a lot of you people who are new to the KLR650 and you want to learn and see how to do this stuff, uh, I hope this helps. So. With no further delay, let's go ahead and get started and uh, change that fork oil. Okay, so to begin with, we need to remove the two fork caps located here and here. Uh, you may have to pull your cabling out of the way to uh, get to it. Uh, and to do this, on, on my configuration, it's just requiring a 22 millimeter uh, socket. As you can see, I have it on a long extension so that I can clear the handlebars and get in here. Um, so let's go ahead and break this loose. You may need to pivot the handlebars so they'll lock. And then, there we go. So just break that loose. Now I would like to note that I have my bike up on jack stands uh, and with the weight at the rear uh, to lift the front wheel off the ground. Uh, so what that's going to do is take any pressure off of the forks uh, so you don't have these springs. Now, uh, there is a spring, but there's the, there's the cap uh, that's uh, come out. So let's set that aside. And then next, we'll just reach in and there you'll see the spacer tube at the top. So let's go ahead and pull that out. It may have a little oil on it. So if you want to uh, just take a oh, shop rag and just wipe that off, set it aside. All right, so the next thing we need to do is to uh, reach down the hole. Now, uh, you can see that spacer <clears throat> is pretty far, so your spring is that far down in the tube. Uh, so in order to extract the spring and the washer out, what I've done is I've taken just a piece of wire uh, here and uh, put a handle on one end to hold on to and, uh, and then have a small hook like you see here on the other end to reach down in there and hook that spring and pull it out. Uh, this piece of wire is about 24 inches long total, so you can use a coat hanger or I just happen to have some spools of wire here in the shop, so I cut off a section and, uh, and, and just made a little makeshift hook to get that out. Now here's a picture of the, uh, of the spring down in the tube, so you'll see what it looks like down in there. And what we're going to do is reach down in between that washer and pull that out. So now let's go ahead and reach on down in the tube, and I know you can't see this on camera. But all you simply do is use that hook to grab it, and you can see as it's coming out, uh, the washer is here and the spring. So make sure you get a hold of both of those. Don't drop it. So let's go ahead and pull that out. And again, this is going to be dripping in uh, fork oil. So I'm just using a little rag here to kind of absorb that.
Okay, so this portion of the video is about removing the forks uh, in order to dump the oil out. Uh, there's no drain plugs in a 2008 or later. Some people will say you need to remove the plugs from the bottom. Don't do that. That's actually what holds the whole rod assembly inside the shock. The best way to do it is to simply just remove the forks and dump the oil out and pump them out. So the first step, since I have a lowered fender using the Eagle Mike fork brace, raise the boot up and I've removed the two outer clamps. And then we can simply rotate the uh, fender up and out. So the next step will be to uh, loosen the nut on the axle. Uh, don't take it all the way out yet. Uh, and then loosen the Allen bolts that hold the, uh, the axle clamps in place. Right now, just have those loosened up a bit. Not out. Then loosen and remove the speedometer cable. I'd already broken that loose. So we'll just let that hang over there. And at this point, with the nut still on the axle, but far enough out to where it's not going to impact the bolt itself, I like to take a wrench or something and just knock that loose so that the bolt starts to break free over here. The next step will be to remove the brake caliper, as well as all the brackets that hold the reflectors on, as well as the cable mounts. So at this point, I'm going to loosen or remove this bolt. So that that is free. And then with a 12 millimeter socket, we will remove the two bolts that hold the brake caliper on. And be sure and support the brake caliper so it doesn't fall. And then work it off of the brake disc. Uh, I have this little wire uh, hanger that I made that I just hook in here and that's to avoid any sort of weight or stress. And I hook that around the crash bar to support the weight of the disc caliper. Okay, next we can remove the front wheel. So loosen that bolt, tap that out of there. Remove the nut completely. And now from this side, we can get a hold of the bolt and start working that out. Axle removed, set the front wheel aside. At this point, we can remove the two reflectors using a 10 millimeter socket. Just remove that nut from the back of the reflector, and that's what holds that on. Put the nut back on temporarily so that we don't lose it. And as you'll see, that brake cable is free from the fork tube itself, and we do the same thing on this side. And let that bracket, I'll just put it back on here. At this point, we can loosen the bolts holding the clamps on the trees. We'll start with the upper tree and then move down here to the lower tree. Okay, at this point we have the bolts on the upper triple tree, uh, the upper fork tree uh, loosened. Now I'm gonna loosen the one here on the right. I'm supporting the fork. It's loose enough that we can work the fork tube out. And so now I have one fork tube. So now the spring and the washer is already removed, so I'm going to pour the old oil out. As you can see, it's kind of grimy, so I'm glad I'm changing this. So I'm gently working the front shock up and down, pumping it as you will to remove as much of the old oil as possible. 
And my bike's got a little over 17,000 miles on it at this point. And I have... I was tempted to not change the fork oil because of the extra work of removing the fork tubes. But after seeing the oil, I'm glad I did. Okay. So I'm going to set this one aside. And now we're going to do the same thing with the other. So let's go ahead and work this one out. And do the same thing. Oh, that is pretty nasty stuff, I can imagine. If the bike had, you know, 40, 50,000 miles on it. See the, the oil there. Pretty pretty nasty. So my seals are in pretty good shape. They're a little dirty, but the tubes are in, are nice and clean and not uh, scarred in any way. We already have the one back and reinstalled. Let's go ahead and slide the right, or actually the left of the bike, back up in there. And I'm checking up top to make sure that it's. There we go, seated all the way to the top of the tree. And snug up this bolt. Okay, so I have my torque wrench now set to 15 foot-pounds. And I'm going to, uh, so per the maintenance manual, these fork clamps are supposed to be set to 15 foot-pounds, or torqued. So we will... There we go, that one popped. There we go, that one's torqued. And that is torqued. There we go. So now let's move up top. So now we have our fork tubes back in place and we have the uh, bolts torqued down to 15 foot-pounds. We just put everything back on in reverse. The front brake cable. Let's bring our front tire back over. Get our fork tubes aligned properly. Now just for note, there is a notch right here that goes into a notch on the speedometer uh, hub so you want to make sure that notch lines back up and let's get the axle started back in there we go see that bolt over here and let's get our axle nut back on now if you did not if your hub doesn't line up it won't be at that angle and you'll feel that it's in that notch and it won't turn. So there. So let's go ahead while we're thinking about it and get this speedometer cable reattached. Right, just enough to make sure it's snug, it's not going to come loose. And on this side we'll go ahead and snug this up by hand. Now if you get the bolt too tight, you don't want any play in there. And lastly, we'll put our brake caliper back on. If you need to change your brakes, brake pads, this is a good time to do it. The maintenance manual does uh, call for 10 weight, uh, Kayaba 10 weight or equivalent. Uh, I like Felray, it's served me well in the past. Uh, each 
shock tube will take uh, 500 cc's, uh, which is the equivalent of 16.9 ounces. So I have my measurement tube here, my Bike Master uh, measure cup, and I've marked on here at the 16.9 ounce uh, mark, and I'll be using that to fill up each tube. Okay, so now we're going to uh, refill our fork tube. So we have our, our new fork oil. Let's pull up. And remove it, and we're going to fill it up to, as I mentioned earlier, to the 16.9 uh, uh, ounce range. There we go. And we'll pour this in one of the fork tubes. And with the assistance of a funnel to uh, keep from spilling it everywhere, just a small funnel, we're going to come in here and just pour this in. There we go. All right, so there you go. That's all there is to changing the fork oil. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Hardest part is having to remove the forks in order to dump that oil out. Um, you know, you can use a pump or something. I, I prefer to just remove the fork tubes, turn them upside down and drain the oil like you saw me do here in the video. Uh, does a great job. So I hope you like that and hope it, it fits the bill of what you were wanting to see. Uh, stay tuned for more in the KLR maintenance series uh, and I'll try to get some more of those up uh, fairly soon. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Keep the suggestions coming. This is Tim Two Wheels and that's how I do it.